binds. However, when an issue uh, comes up, presents itself, you don't deal with it in an appropriate way, in keeping with the mandate you sought. So we have seen the continued breaching of pay caps for ministerial advisers, the scandalous waste of 85 million euros of taxpayers' money on consultants at Irish Water, the cruel way you took medical cards away from children and others with profound di uh, disabilities, and the abuse of the Oireachtas with strokes such as the McNulty affair. And now we have the IBRC scandal, and you won't face up to the need for a fully independent commission of investigation. Your refusal to have the very serious issues surrounding site serve and the IBRC transactions independently investigated shows that you're not in the slightest bit serious about genuine political reform. And one of the issues that site serve and the IBRC scandal outrage as ordinary citizens is about is the presence of the same group of solicitors, brokers and accountants on the various sides of the deal. Now, there also was, as we know famously, a small, another small group of insiders in place when this state was brought into the very serious financial collapse that all of us experienced. And Fianna Fáil, then Labour and Fine Gael took this so-called banking debt, which was created by these elites, and turned it into the people's debt, and saddled citizens with 64 billion of a bill which our children, our grandchildren and our great-grandchildren will be paying. And the other thing you see that really annoys people, and which is causing deep anger because of the degree of radicalisation, education and politicisation that has taken place, is that there are still insiders still making huge sums of money out of the recession. And that's the truth of it. The overriding theme of the Fine Gael Labour Coalition has been a deeply unfair economic policy. It has imposed destructive austerity measures on struggling families and vulnerable citizens. Thousands have been forced out of work or into low-paid jobs. Hundreds of thousands have been forced to emigrate. This government's budgets have been the most regressive in the state's history. You have heaped one stealth tax after another stealth tax on citizens. The imposition of domestic water charges in the face of huge public opposition has proved to be the final straw for many families. And this Fine Gael and Labour government is all about protecting the wealthy, the privileged and the insiders. It offers nothing but hardship for the vast majority of families, workers and vulnerable citizens. You have also seriously undermined public services. Children, older citizens, citizens with disabilities who are reliant on these services are the victims. You ignore poverty, including child poverty. You cut job seekers allowance, you cut respite care, you abolish the cost of education allowance, undermine school completion programmes, taxed maternity benefit, cut the invalidity pension, cut rent supplement. And the spring statement has done nothing in terms of dealing with the crisis in our hospitals. There are 450,000 people in waiting lists as a result of the INE crisis. The government has failed to make any inroads in reducing waiting lists and waiting times. And January of this year saw record numbers of citizens on trolleys, over 600 for the first time on your watch, T-shirt. Despite promises to end the scandal of patients on trolleys, there is no sign of this problem being resolved. And on your watch, the health workers available to tackle this crisis have been reduced by 11,000 full-time equivalent staff. Yesterday's announcement saw no, absolutely no change in direction, no new course being charted, no relief to low- and middle-income earners or vulnerable citizens. So the government talks about a recovery, but well, it's a two-tier, it's an unfair recovery. Most people, and you acknowledge this in fairness to you, 
are not experiencing any improvement in their daily lives. You accept that they are not feeling the benefits of your recovery. And that's because there is no recovery for those people who you have impoverished. If they can't feel it, it's not happening. And the reason they can't feel it is because it isn't happening. And vast swathes of rural Ireland have seen no recovery whatsoever. Rural schools, guard stations, post offices have been closed at an alarming rate. The genuine bottoms-up approach that was so central to the leader programmes have been removed. Small and medium businesses have been starved of credit and neglected by the government so that many of our rural towns are dying on their feet. Go up the main street of any small village or town and look at the number of closed shops. The government has consistently made living in rural Ireland more difficult with cuts to rural transport programmes, higher costs for private car users and cuts to bus iron and Ian Road iron. The government has also presided over unprecedented levels of emigration in modern times. You describe this as a lifestyle choice. And we were told yesterday that a reduction in the marginal tax rate is about bringing immigrants home. Does the government seriously believe that our immigrants left because of the marginal tax rate? That there are people in Boston and Baltimore and Brisbane waiting? They got the news yesterday that they're packing their bags. The government is bringing in a marginal tax rate. Let's go home. Yesterday's economic statement had nothing to say about the major housing crisis. Thousands of tenants face an uncertain future as rents continue to rise. And those in mortgage difficulties continue to be pursued by the banks. What's the government done? The government's given the banks the veto. Then you stand up here and you say you're unhappy at the behaviour of the banks. But this government voted down a Sinn Féin bill to protect the family home that could have prevented the repossessions that are now occurring. The government is now claiming that it's going to take action on mortgage arrears and interest rates. But your response to the housing problem has been to impose a tax on the family home. On the job front, yes, every job is to be welcomed. But this state has the second highest percentage of low-paid jobs in the developed world. Shin Shin and Aranya. More than 20% of jobs are now low pay. Many workers are poorer now than at the time this government took office. The Low Pay Commission will not deal adequately with this. The government should be moving in a structured way. You don't need a Low Pay Commission. You should be moving in a structured way to having a living wage for all workers in this state. And after four years in government, workers still have no right to collect the bargaining. No right to collect the bargaining after four years of labour in government. So what's labour in government for? The failure of labour has been stark. Now we know that Fine Gael governs primarily in the interest of the privileged and of the elites. But labour continuously tells us that they are there to put the brakes on Fine Gael, that things would be worse without them. But the evidence tells us the opposite. Let's not forget, and she lauded herself today and commended herself today on this issue, that Labour leader Joan Burton helped negotiate the programme for government. She is an architect of the austerity policies of this government. And that programme saw Labour buy in to that austerity policy and deliberately break its election promises. Did no one stop to think, oh, we said this during the election? We can't do that. We made a promise. We made a commitment. We made a contract. We sought a mandate. Politics is about choices. The choices this government faced was whether to invest in public services so that citizens could have the same rights, or whether we returned to pre-election promises about tax cuts. So the government makes its choice to pursue policies which have increasingly polarised our society. The richest 250 people in this state are worth a combined 75.03 billion euros. Their wealth has increased by 15.9 per cent 
in the last year. The Sunday Times Rich List claims that Ireland is home to 13 billionaires who have a combined fortune of 37.89 billion and that the net worth of the countries or the states wealthy elite is now significantly ahead of that recorded at the end of the so-called Celtic Tiger in 2008. So during the recession, these folks have become wealthier than they were during the boom. Under your government, Taoiseach, this is still the best small country in the world for golden circles. Meanwhile, homeless people are dying on our streets, families are being evicted from their homes, children are going to school hungry, and workers, including guard officers, are being forced to sleep in their cars. Now, Sinn Féin would choose a fairer way of doing things. We believe in putting the interests of citizens first, as opposed to the rich and the powerful. We believe in putting the interests of citizens at the centre of political considerations. So Sinn Féin would use any improvement in government finances to build a fair recovery, to repair the damage that has been done. And that means investing in public services, not repeating the boom and bust cycle caused by tax cutting. Why didn't you do that, Taoiseach? You say you don't get constructive suggestions from the opposition. Why don't you stand on a basic threshold of economic justice? Imagine economic justice, the right to a home, access to education, the right to a job, the right to universal health care. Sinn Féin believes it's the state's responsibility to improve conditions for ordinary citizens and struggling families, and in particular to deliver on jobs, housing, health care and education. So we would seek to relieve the burden by abolishing water charges. Why didn't you do that? Why didn't you announce the abolition of the family home tax? That would give $800 million back to working families. Why didn't you take 200,000 people earning below 17,000 euros out of the universal social charge? Why don't you invest in public services and ensure that they're accessible to citizens, regardless of where they live in this state? Sinn Féin would genuinely work to bring our immigrants home. You won't even deliver on voting rights for Irish citizens abroad notwithstanding the Constitutional Convention's recommendation on that issue. There is also a need to ensure recovery for rural communities. It is beyond me that Chuck Dalla, like yourself from a rural community, do not appreciate that people there have the same rights to a decent life as people living in urban areas. Zero hour contracts. Why does not the government ban the scandal of zero hour contracts? Why don't you get rid of job bridge? Why don't you introduce rent controls? Very simple thing. Why don't you do that to help stem the rising tide of homelessness? Why don't you offer security and protection? Distress. Leaving aside, we talk about poverty, we talk about economic difficulties. The biggest uh, condition forcing itself down on people is stress as a consequence of their social and economic conditions. So we should be at least able to offer people greater security, some sense of protection, some sense of the pursuit of human happiness. Why don't you help to keep tenants living in, private rented, in the private rented sector in their homes? The security of a home. Why don't you change, and you've refused to do this, and we will do this if we have a mandate, that is to change the insolvency laws to remove the bank's veto. So Fine Gael, Fianna Fáil and Labour, and Fianna Fáil have a point because they say the government is implementing Fianna Fáil policy, and that is uh, true. That is why it is so hard for Fianna Fáil to really oppose what you are doing. They may pick one or two little fights with you, but really you are implementing what they set in train. So yesterday was all about election promises. It was actually an abuse of the doll for the purposes of party political propaganda. But the citizens who have felt the brunt of your government's policies will not be fooled by this empty rhetoric. 
What is required is a radical change of political direction, a fair recovery, a recovery for everyone, a recovery that leaves no family behind, that leaves no community behind. And that is not on the agenda of this Fine Gael-led administration. You have figured out your demographic, you're targeting them with your uh, various uh, promises, and as long as you get that vote delivered to hell with everybody else. This government does prefer giveaways for the wealthy and the privilege and tax cuts for the better off. And, you know, we need to be asking, and I've asked you this consistently since I came in here, what are the social consequences of your policies? What are the social outworkings of your policies? What kind of society will be left after another year of this government? Where is the recovery for those tens or hundreds of thousands of people in mortgage and in economic distress? Where is the recovery for rural communities blighted by immigration and starved of investment? We need to ask ourselves as we approach the centenary of the 1916 Rising, of the proclamation of the Republic, we want another period of austerity for low- and middle-income families while the wealthy remain untouchable. Or do we want a real republic based on equality, a citizens-based, citizens-centred, right-based society? Do we want an economy built on property bubbles or when, when the banks fail, when the golden circles cause the calamity, then the people have to foot the bill? No chance of socialising the wealth of the Celtic Tiger. No problem socialising the debt caused by the Golden Circles. So Sinn Féin stands for a real recovery, a fair recovery, for decency that is based upon the right of citizens to be able to live in some comfort and some modicum of contentment in their own place. The alternative that we are putting forward of reducing the tax burden on low- and middle-income families, protecting public services and investing in real jobs are the ingredients of a genuine recovery. I note that the Tanishta mentions the North. The Taoiseach does not mention it at all. But the Tanishta and the Fianna Fáil leader rule out the usual misinformation about issues there. Now, this is the same Tanishta who said not a word in my presence at meetings with the British Government where Sinn Féin were making it clear that we would not embrace austerity while they are from the Tories in London or Fine Gael and Labour in Dublin. And the Fianna Fáil leader, who to my knowledge has yet even to meet with the Deputy First Minister since uh, he came into that uh, position. And one of your friends, I don't know if you were reading the uh, media this week, your friends, your sister parties in the SDLP, who refused or who failed to turn up in the Assembly this week to support marriage equality legislation put forward by Sinn Féin. So the bill was lost by two votes. A third of the SDLP didn't turn up. So the Tanish is welcome to come out in the North, as is the Fianna Fáil leader. But please, try to be accurate because the platitudes that come from here impress no one, not in this state and especially not in the North. Fine Gael and Labour, Taoiseach, have long since abandoned the mandate on which you were elected. So rather than yesterday's PR exercise, you should put your policies to the people and call a general election. Gora Margaret. Um, there is no one to contribute, I think, from the technical group, so 